Okay, knitters, we're here together to add one more stitch to our stitch library. In our library, we're going to have several choices for you in different stitches and different motifs to work using the Portuguese style of knitting. Today, I'm going to show you the Trinity stitch. Don't forget to like and subscribe for my channel, okay? This stitch is beautiful. This stitch offers a lot of texture and you can see how it looks like bubbles and they're really raised and it's a very easy stitch. You're going to find the description right below and it's a stitch that takes four rows and a repeat of four. Okay, so here I cast on a multiple of four plus two for the selvages. And I'm going to start showing you the first row, which is pretty easy. Every odd row, what you're going to do is knit the first stitch and purl to the last stitch. And when you get to the last stitch, you knit again. I start doing this by following the pattern but the reason they are knitting the first and the last stitch is to get a selvage stitch that is like a garter. You could have purled all the stitches and purled the first and the last in the next row and you're going to get a garter stitch too. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. But to follow the pattern that I have written, we're going to again knit the first one Purl all the stitches of the row until you get to the last stitch and the last stitch you're going to knit. Now we're going to turn, like give myself some more yarn here so I can work. We're going to turn and now is when really the trinity happens. We're going to knit the first and the last in this row as well and I'm gonna see here see where I have three stitches coming from one in the previous row the pattern will tell you what to do I just look and I know what I have to do next okay so row number two knit one I'm gonna pull those three stitches together I split the yarn here. Let me correct this. There we go. And in the next stitch, I'm going to make three stitches in one. The way I do that is by knit one, don't drop, move the yarn down, pull one, don't drop, move the yarn down, up, I mean, and knit one. So from one stitch I made three and I really kind of enlarged that stitch but doesn't matter. And in the next three I pick up them together. Let me go over all three and pull the three together. And again, so it repeats the same thing all the way to the end. Knit one, Purl one, knit one, and the next three you purl to three together, meaning you are replacing the, the two extra stitches you made in a previous stitch, you were binding off on the next. Knit, purl, knit, I'm trying to do it slowly so you can see, see in one stitch I made three and now I'm gonna purl three together and we're almost finishing the row knit, purl, knit, bring the yarn below the right hand needle and whoops, 
don't let them go just pick them up all three and purl the three together knit purl knit Pro the three together. And again, knit, pro, knit, the last stitch you knit. And all the odd rows are the same. So this is gonna be the same one I did, like row number one, knit one, and purl to the last stitch for all stitches. And if you have a stitch that you would like to see how I do using the Portuguese style, please contact me, okay? My email is andreawongknits at gmail.com. I'm taking suggestions for both uh, uh, a stitch library. I have some requests that I haven't answered yet. And, or if you have questions in how I do a certain technique or how I knit something using the Portuguese style, again, you can contact me by email. That's the best way to reach me. So, this row number three, I knit the first, I pro all the stitches until the end and knit one, turn. And row number four, knit one. And now I'm going to start by making three stitches. So in other words, I'm staggering what I've done in the row number two. Make three and now pull the three together. And you've seen me doing this before, so I'm gonna do once more and should be enough. So if from one stitch you make three, knit, pro, and knit. And the next three that I increased before, you are going to pull the three together. And I think I showed you all the skills that you need to make this Trinity stitch. I think it's very pretty. I want to show you actually a sample that I have. This is a Big Needles Malabrigo yarn, very thick. But I want to show you a sample that I have. The same stitch with the fine yarn and fine needles. This is the same Trinity stitch. And this is a blanket, a baby blanket, that has a garter stitch border, Trinity stitch all the way around, and the Solomon knot, which is a crochet pattern around the blanket. Okay, it's a baby blanket. It was my son's blanket. But here's another um, example of the Trinity stitch. And you can see even in a fine yarn, you are going to see that the, the little bubbles or the little texture are separate. They're kind of a, see, see through. And even in my Malabrigo yarn, they get, when you work the three together, you kind of pull the yarn and you can kind of see through. Okay, so I hope you are inspired to use the Trinity stitch in many patterns, in many ways that your imagination uh, will bring to you. And again, if you have questions, you know how to find me, okay? I'll see you next time.